Okay, folks, and welcome back to the building of this flare uh, Fokker D7. Uh, when I was rigging it up and putting everything together, um, I noticed that there seemed to be a twist induced in the wing when I bolted on these interplane struts. Now, I know they're accurate, at least they're exactly the same as the plan. But when I was actually bolting them in place, I felt like the wing was twisting. And on further investigation, it, it was apparent that the wing has got quite a bit of flex in it. So I'll demonstrate that first and I'll show you what I've done about it. So if I take the wing, I think it's quite apparent that even given the webbing here, there's quite a bit of flex, I think, in the wing. Now, you want the wing, obviously, to be as rigid as possible. Um, a great deal of the rigidity will come in when the wing's covered. It always does. And I could make it more rigid by uh, putting some additional webbing between these rear spars. But I've decided to go slightly differently, and this is what I've done. I'll turn it round. I've added some... Well, it's quite stiff balsa, um, one eighth square, I would say. And it's going from the top. Wait a moment. It's going from the top of the upper spar down to the lower trailing edge. Lower trailing edge, upper spar. And I think that that has made for a much stiffer wing for a few grams of additional weight and i think the it, it's well worth in my view putting this in um we'll see it was just something i spotted and i wasn't happy with it at all so i'll finish doing that i'll do it on both of the wings and then we look at actually uh covering the cabine wire which i did last time well a couple of videos ago and covering that in balsa so it looks more scale like. Let's crack on. So that little addition has been completed now. And while I'm doing it, of course, the wing's pinned down to keep it flat to make sure I'm not actually imparting a twist into the wing. I just think for a few extra ounces of weight, it makes a dramatic difference to the rigidity of the wing. And you, the last thing you want is a wing that's going to flex. So, I'm going to do the same on the upper wing. Reach over for it. However, I don't think there's actually a need to do it the full length of the wing. This is the portion of the wing that I think is most likely to twist, the end bit where the aerolons are. So, I'm not going to do it in the centre section. I'm only going to do the diagonals here. And I think that will also add greatly. I may even actually put them here, you know, on this end piece. I'm not sure. No, I won't because I've got too much going on there with servos and so on. So I'll put them on this, this part here and I think that'll add greatly to the rigidity of the upper wing. I don't want any twists in this wing at all for obvious reasons. Well, that's the wings sorted. Uh, at least for me, I'm happier with that. They're a lot more rigid. Uh, less flex in them there'll still be a lot of strength that will come from covering them and ten covering them in a fabric covering and that will add dramatically to the strength and i can ensure that they are warp free before they go on i may have to tweak the interplane struts to get the angles right um we'll see but that's that part of the job done the next part to do will involve if I can put that down without knocking it off. Making some um, covering for the wire cabine struts so that they look less like wire cabine struts and for the undercarriage. Uh, and we'll crack on with that next. Okay, somebody um, a while back actually asked how um, I go about covering the struts. And in this case, the cabine strut with the balsa and it's quite a simple procedure but it is when i do it anyway um i'm using some scrap wood from the box because <clears throat> quite honestly I, I can't find what they're referring to um 
But basically this is how I'm going to do it. Cut this to length. Which I'll do. Okay, so that's going to be the outer cladding. Now, I need to set this into the balsa. So what I do is <coughs> I put a mark down the centre and I'm just eyeballing this to be honest with you. I'm going to cut a V out. I'll start with a, a vertical part way through. I cut a V by just angling the blade slightly. And then I'll flick it round and do the same from the other side. Setting the blade at 45 degrees here. Okay, and then I'm going to use this. It's a it's a rat-tailed rasp, I believe is the proper name for it. It's a very coarse uh, very cheap. I think I got them in a pack for a fiver or something ages ago. And basically all I do is I run the rasp down the groove and that produces a nice channel that will accept the piano wire from, in this case, the Cabean strut. Now let's have a look. See if I've got enough. So this will go on the outside. So you have to orientate and make sure you've got it the right way around. It needs to go a little deeper. A little deeper. <clears throat> it's quite soft, this ball, so you don't want it. It doesn't have to be very hard. A bit more trying to keep the the rasp and I can see I'm laying it fully down there now. That's the wrong side, that's it. Just like that. Yep, happy with that. And once you're happy with it, make sure you've got it orientated the right way around. So it goes like that. I'll run some thick C here down the joint. spray the wire with some kicker because this will aid the process and I'm just going to line it up there we go and when this is a set what I'll do well I'll actually demonstrate why not what I'll do is I'll just round the edges. Once this is painted up, it'll look the business. These ends be painted the same colour. And what I sometimes do is I use some um, uh, mini put epoxy to blend these in. If it's needed, it may be needed here. But that's in place. And the next thing to do is just to take the corners off. And for that, I'm just going to use a sanding stick and take the corners off. To produce the, the strut. Ready to be stained or painted. It'll be painted in this case. 
match your preferred colour scheme, whatever that may be. So I hope you've enjoyed this little journey on the video. Um, perhaps an unnecessary change to the wing structure, but, you know, it's a kit. It doesn't mean you've got to be slavish to it. Um, if you think something could be improved or modified to make it a better model, then do it. And in this case, I think stiffening up, particularly the rear third of the wing, will bring benefits because obviously you don't want a wing that's flexing and moving. And I did notice that in this case, the wing was a little bit too flexible. And for a minute addition for those cross braces, I think that's make it made a big difference to the overall rigidity of the wing. Perhaps unnecessary. It's up to you. You don't need to take the advice. It's just my mulling and thoughts. And there we go. One strut completed. Of course, I'll do that for all of the wing uh, cabines and for the interplane struts. There we go. Have fun, folks. Get creative. And there's the strut from the other side. Now, in some cases, you can get away with leaving that. But I think in this case, I'm going to put another piece on the back. I'm just going to use some thin balsa for that. So I'm going to cut a strip using the stripping tool. Great little tools these. I, I've used them on a number of videos and they allow you to select your balsa much more carefully and therefore make a better job of it. And it's a thin sheet, thin piece. I'm going to just repeat the procedure that I've done with the other side. You have to be a little bit more delicate with this because it is thin. And I'll wrap that round and glue that on. In fact, I'm going to try doing that without actually putting a groove in because it's so thin, there's not a lot there. So if I put some glue along. Glue this on. getting there and you can always use this kicker that's far too much you can always use the kicker to help if you think you've got a stubborn a stubborn bit of glue for some reason I'm not sure exactly the chemistry but sometimes the sea doesn't bond instantly and if it doesn't it tends not to bond at all so the kick has a great aid. You see I'm just teasing it round. Fairly you want fairly soft balsa for this, you don't want anything that's too hard. Because it, if it's too hard it'll just be brittle and break. So I've cocooned the wire in the balsa. And then, that's better, happier with that. You simply take your file to it, your file stick. And that's what I'm doing here. And then you've got a nice profiled
one completed strut. Well, have fun, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a click. It helps. And if you get the opportunity to get out flying, do so. It's great fun. It's a great hobby. Bye now.